Right, in my last video I showed you how I um, did this modification on the base of the Chinese mini lathe tailstock to keep the um, T-nut in position and make the um, tailstock self-aligning making it easy to take the tailstock off and put it back on without having to reach underneath to position the actual um, T-nut so now I'd like to show you how I've made an extra locking device that goes on the back and this is to eliminate any pushing back of the tailstock when using larger drills. So firstly from the top side of the base I used a scriber to mark the centre of the um, block. Then about 10 millimeter from the back face, I center punched for the first screw hole. And the second hole is about 52 millimeter to the center from the back face. Then I put it on my bench drill, made sure the table was nice and square and did a pilot drill and then a 5mm drill which is the core diameter for a 6mm thread and I went down 25mm deep and because I haven't got a milling machine I used the bench drill and twisted the chuck by hand to start the taps off and get them nice and square and finished tapping to depth in the vise and this piece is um, only cast iron and it drills and taps nice and easily. I then reassembled the tailstock and adjusted this T-nut with the lever to get it in its fully working and locking positions. I then got a piece of brass which is three quarters of an inch wide half an inch thick and it's about 3.3 uh, inches long which is plus and I'm leaving it plus at this stage and then I squared off the end with a disc sander and established this angle on here which is the same angle that is on the ways and you can put it on the lathe like that sight down the back until you get that angle correct I then take the tailstock and in those um, holes that I've just threaded I put a 20 millimeter stainless steel grub screw and this has a nice um, coned end um, with a central indent and it's quite sharp on that and I'm screwing those into those threads backwards like that and leaving them protruding by about 10 millimeter so both are exactly the same and then I put the tailstock onto the lathe and push it down and put the brass piece that I've just done the angle on so it's overhanging the back of the lathe by a couple of millimeter and then lock the tailstock solid and while pushing the brass onto the top of the ways and onto the angle um, that I've just done I hold it tightly in that position and give it a couple of taps with a brass mallet and that will give me the exact location of the two holes that I've got to drill clearance holes for the 6mm bolts. So using those backward grub screws is just a little trick to get everything in exactly the correct position up and down and the spacings of the holes. So then I drilled the holes on the bench drill um, to clear for the 6mm bolts. I then made a um, tina up out of mild steel, um, milled it on the lathe and um, done an 8mm thread in the centre there 
you can use brass if you want and um, if you haven't got a mill or you can't do a milling on the lathe uh, you can actually file those parts and um, the most important thing with the Tina is that you get the um, depth of those exactly the same so that when it pulls up underneath both sides will meet the um, underside of the ways together. I then bolted it together tightly with the 8mm bolt and drilled down right the way through to accept um, a couple of roll pins. And those roll pins um, are a tight fit in the brass and then I drilled out the uh, tina um, so that they become clearance holes on those roll pins. And then I found a spring that goes in the centre. The bolt goes down through that spring and screws into the T-nut. And the roll pins keep the um, T-nut in position like the other one. And you've got a simple locking device. And when it's on the lathe, um, you don't have to reach underneath with this one either, it just goes straight onto the ways. So then I put this part onto the ways and tighten the bolt down finger tight um, so it locks onto the ways and then back it off a quarter of a turn. And then I got a cheap ring spanner, um, cut the other end off and ground off both sides so it's um, about the same thickness as the nut head and that's so it doesn't clash with the underside of the lever assembly then I position the ring spanner on the assembly and screw it onto the back of the tailstock but at this stage um, just screw the uh, allen bolts down finger tight and um, back them off a quarter of a turn just to leave them a little bit loose so the assembly can move about so it's important to have this one loose the first time you put it on and then lock the other lever and again while pushing this one down tightly just in case there's a little bit of movement on the shaft of the bolt tighten those up and then um, it won't move it out of position at all And that's it. So that one locks the tailstock rock solid and if you fit one of these you'll never have it pushing back ever again. So that one's good now but you have the extra lever. So that's an easy method I've shown you there to get that all dead correct um, without having to do a lot of measuring up and um, you must have that absolutely dead on uh, the same level as the actual tailstock and that's a way of doing it um, if you don't it could actually kick the tailstock up a bit when you lock this one so um, that's my method of doing that and whenever I use this um, lock I always lock this one first Plus, I have the ability to take the tailstock off and put it back onto the lathe easily without having to reach underneath to position the T-nuts. Um, and I often like to do machining um, without this tailstock to give myself more room, like I've said before. And um, I'm very pleased as it saves a lot of messing about or the chance of getting your fingers caught underneath. <laughs>